Hi everyone, it's Timmy with Ivy Corrine Bath and Body. I am going to cut, just took it out of the mold, it's a little tacky. Um, but this is our raspberry lemonade soap. Smells sensational. And so we're going to cut that one today. I can get it on the mold, on the cutter. Like I said, I just took it out of the mold. It's a little tacky on the sides. But it must have, I don't know if it gelled, honestly, because it's been done for, I made this on Saturday or Sunday. I think it was Sunday. And it is literally now Friday. So it's been almost a whole week and it's still quite tacky. So it may not have gelled. But even if it didn't, that's okay. It just, it still feels really soft. And my soaps in general are not soft ever. So. That's what makes me think that it might not have gelled. So, oh, I love that. I love the yellow, the color that we got. It came out beautiful. Please excuse all the bing in the background. Kids are doing the dishes for me, so I am not going to stop them either. <laughs> not for a video, not for anything. Unless the house is on fire, they are continuing. <laughs> um, but anyway, I believe all I did was a drop swirl. Maybe it looks like I ran something through it, so maybe I did a chopstick through this or something. I don't really remember. I'll have to look back at the making video. But basically, yeah, I just got, I love the yellow. It's so creamy looking, so beautiful. And the pink is like perfect. When I was making it, it kind of looked kind of Pepto-y, but it definitely has changed and got a little lighter. I love the colors now. And it, when I took this one, when I took uh, the top off of it, just to bring it out into the kitchen, everybody in the house was like, ooh, what does that smell? Ooh, it smells so good. And it, it really does. It smells really, really good. So, yeah, it came out really nice though. I'm very happy with that. I'm thinking I probably drop swirled it in and then swirled it around with a skewer because those look like skewer marks to me. So I think that might have been what I did or maybe I, you know what, I have no idea. I really don't <laughs> because, yeah, such is my life. They came up, oh, look, there's a little heart. So cute. Yeah, so I can't tell by looking at it if it gelled or not. Um... I don't see why it wouldn't. My soaps get really hot unless this fragrance oil just doesn't heat up, which could be the case. And yes, my apron's on inside out. See my tag? Don't pay attention to that. You didn't see that. Um, yeah, I, I had it on for a while and then I looked down and I was like, you know, the darn thing's on inside out. Oh well. <laughs> So, oh, and I'm going to cut for you on this same video, I'm going to do the rest of this uh, raspberry lemonade. And then I figured since I told you guys about the hot process soap that I've been doing with the essential oils, that I have two loaves that I need to cut, so I figured why not cut it with you. So that's what we're going to do after this, is we will cut those two, just so you can get an idea. Um, they do not look anything like my cold process soaps. Um, my cold process soaps are very um, just smooth and silky looking and you get some really awesome coloring. Uh, that is not what you get with hot process soap. And it's not what I'm going for because I won't use synthetic colors at all. Like micas and oxides and pigments, some people consider them natural but because you can get them out of nature. but. The ones that we use, we don't get out of nature. They're made in a lab because if you pulled an oxide out of nature or mica, it would be contaminated with things. So we don't, ours are actually synthetic, um, even though in general you can get them from nature. Um, but anyway, so I won't even use those. All I use to color my essential oil soaps is herbs, spices, um, I use charcoal, uh, what's something else in there? But it's all just, it's all completely natural. So, because that's the whole point with this is the only thing that is unnatural in those soaps is uh, I do put sodium lactate in there because for me, without it, it is just insanely hard for me to mold them. And it helps with the shrinkage on the bars so that they don't shrink down. And it also helps with, um, 
uh, hardening up bars. I to think there for a minute. Uh, so I do use sodium lactate in there and the lye because the lye is, now you can make natural lye, but it's unreliable. Um, you're not going to be sure how exactly caustic it is. And to be honest, I don't want to mess with ashes and everything else. The, what I use is food grade lye. So it's completely, you know, and totally acceptable for making, you can make pretzels out of that lye, you know, soft pretzels. So it's not going to hurt anything to use it for uh, soap. Anyway, and there's no lye in soap once it's done doing that, once it's be done becoming soap, which I'm sure you've heard me say a thousand times. So anyway, this is a lavender soap that we just did. Um, as you can see, like it's not as smooth and it's more rustic looking but it's natural. This is an all-natural soap. It's a little wet too, which I'm really surprised at because these usually harden up super fast. It must be because I've had my house kind of warm the last couple days because I've just been cold in general. So when I was worried about these, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to try to cut these and they're not going to want to cut. These are going to be so hard. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> So here is the lavender one, and this is actually purple clay is what I used to color this one. And I just put it on the bottom, like I colored the purple, stuck it on the bottom, and then I took a spoon and kind of wisp it through. And you'll probably see even more of that, and that was a lavender bud. I should have cut that on the side. I never think to do that when I have big pieces on there. I always forget. But yeah, it just gives it a little bit of a swirl throughout the soap. And... Uh, yeah, like I said, lavender bud. See the little, see if we can get it, yeah. Here you go, a little line. I mean, it didn't do anything. It's just got a line in it, but. <sighs> but this is a mix for me of, uh, I don't do just straight lavender essential oil. It is lavender, and wow, that one got a deep <laughs> trench in it. Um, this is lavender and a blend of lavadin also, um, which is like a, I believe it's a lavender, a traditional lavender, along with um, prickly lavender. I think it's like they cross those two plants and that's how they get lavadin. But lavadin actually smells more like what you would think lavender is supposed to smell like than actual lavender does. So I mix the two to get a nice combination. And they both have their own properties to them also. So um, they're good for different things. Man, I really hacked up that, huh? Oh, well, it's just so, it'll still wash just fine. But yeah, I really like the little swirl. It's like a little marbling with the purple. And uh, yeah, it's a clay, so it's natural, completely natural. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Those little lavender buds, as smooth and gentle as they may seem, they put some nice gashes in your soap. Of course, this one didn't have one on that side, but it had an air pocket, a couple air pockets on that one. So, um, so that is those ones, and I will do this other piece real fast. I'm so stupid. I seriously just cut it again like that. And I killed it again. Wow. Having a moment, people. It's fine. I'm like, I will have to cut it on the side from now on. Yeah, okay. Good idea. Maybe you should try that sometimes. Look at that one. Holy crap. Oh, well. So these will be on discount. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. They, they're not bad. It's just a little scuff mark from when they got cut. I don't know. I will probably, the ones with the bigger gashes, I will probably take those for myself. But anyway, yeah, see that's what happens when you're not thinking while you're doing things. You just keep making the same mistake over and over again. But see, yeah, the little lavender buds are down in there because it caught on the cutter lines. Alright, so we're going to clean this off real fast and I got one more. And the other one we are going to cut is, um, I call it buzz off and because by law we are not allowed to call put the name bug um, on anything that has uh, any properties like that without paying I think it's a hundred thousand uh, dollar fee that you have to pay in order to use the word like bug you know off or 
whatever. And you know what? Honestly, it's a soap. So I look at it more as like not really repelling insects, but more of like taking all the scent off that might attract them. So like it's not a perfumey soap. So if you're going to go outside, it'd be a great soap to wash in because the scents that are in there, those critters don't like them. They don't like citronella. They don't like eucalyptus. Um, so by doing this, um, you can have a soap. Let me go grab that other one. You can have a soap that has the qualities of just taking, like, all the scent that's going to be on your body is stuff that bugs and, or pests, or whatever you want to call them in general, do not like. So it's going to give you protection in the way of you're not going to smell perfumey, so you're not going to attract them. Um, I wouldn't say it's a remedy at all for taking, you know, getting not bitten because, like I said, it's a soap. You're going to put it on, you're going to wash it off. So this one is the one, it's got citronella, eucalyptus, what else is in there? Uh, I have to think. Citronella, eucalyptus, peppermint, and there's one more thing in there. It may be lavender, no, tea tree, that's what it is, so uh, citronella, eucalyptus, tea tree, and peppermint is the blend on this one. And it smells really good. It's definitely more earthy um, as far as this scent goes, but it's very nice. And it's not one that's like, you know, not in my book anyway. I don't think it's bad. Um, and then I'm trying to think what I used to color this. This was, what is it called? Hold on, I got it right here. This is, to look and see. Indigo powder. So it's all natural colorant again, because like I said, so we don't get like a big vibrant blue. Um, it's just more of a light shade of blue, but I just thought it would go nice. It's like a grayish blue. Um, it's quite pretty. So here we go with that one. We will cut this one more, and then this psycho long video will be over. Alright, so this is our sample bar, and then there you go. So yeah, like I said, that's weird, must have been a lavender bud stuck to that. Um, the uh, stuff is very uh, rustic looking, it is not as smooth as our cold process soap but it gets the job done and it's very nice for people who want to go the all natural route. So as you can see, like here's the one and here's the other. The colors are just so different, you know, and the tops are different. This is just a more rustic bar. This is just more of like a, a pretty bar, you know, but it's great because a lot of people like fragrances, but some people, they just want that all natural route. So that's why we provide these. So thanks so much for watching. I'm glad you stuck around to see all the soaps being cut and, uh, we will be back again soon with another making video of something. Probably so. Maybe we'll do something else. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.